In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the toolbox, which is here on the right side of my screen, add objects onto your screen from the toolbox and edit the properties that go along with these objects. If you forgot how to get to your screens, I'll close it out here. And under your project explorer, you can go under the screens tab and then double click on any screens that you want to edit. Before we start adding objects into our screens from the toolbox, I did want to mention screen properties, which are the properties associated with each screen that you can edit. So I am already clicked on screen one, so I'm going to go over to my properties window on the right side here, and it brings up a few properties that you can edit for the screen itself. Before I start walking you through these, I did want to mention this toggle easy mode. This does hide a lot of the advanced properties uh, as far as the properties window, but I like to keep that turned off so it shows me every single property inside of the properties window. A few of these properties I did want to touch on are the name. You can change the name of your screen here. You can change the size of your screen as far as width and height. Um, keep always in memory will keep the screen loaded in the memory once it's already loaded, and this will make the screen load faster. However, it does take up more memory, so depending on your application, you might or might not want to use this. Fit in window will fit the screen to the window that it's in, so I usually keep that checked. And the last thing I wanted to mention is the background, which is where you can change the background color of your screen, as well as load in a background image using these three dots here, uh, which will direct you to the pictures part of your computer, and you can load in the image there. So. Those are a few properties I wanted to mention just on the screen itself, but now we're gonna start adding objects into our screens from the toolbox. Inside the toolbox, you'll find a lot of the shapes and objects you'll be adding into your screens as you develop. Moving from top to bottom under basic shapes, that's where you'll find a lot of the shapes you would expect with the software. Um, I did want to distinguish between a rectangle, a text shape, and if you go down here under objects, there is an edit box. The first two, the rectangle and the text shape are read only objects. So that means you can use these to display static text or values. The text shape is just a rectangle without the borders, as you can see here. And the edit box on the other hand allows users to input or write values into the screen as it's running. So if you want the user to add in a value that will change a variable, for instance, uh, that's where you use the edit box. Moving along in the toolbox and back up to the top, there are some basic controls you can add in like a checkbox or radio button, even a basic push button or a hot region. And the hot region is actually an invisible button you can use um, so that if that the user clicks on that portion of the screen, you can make something happen. So that might be useful depending on your applications. I'll delete that for now. And moving along in the toolbox, there's a lot of other pre-designed buttons in all shapes and sizes. There are some pre-designed lights. So for this program, I'm gonna add in a green light and then also a rectangular button. So I'm gonna make that a gray button here. Uh, and I'll be using that button to turn that light on and off. And I'll show you how to do that with variables in a few videos. There are also a lot of switches, selectors, sliders, and gauges you can add in, um, which are pretty self-explanatory. But for now, I'm just gonna leave these two objects in here for my project. Also under objects, there are a lot more shapes and objects you can add into your screen. I'm not gonna touch on all of them, but some that you might use are the embedded view, which actually embeds one screen into another. So you'll notice I'm on screen one here, I'm zoomed in a bit, so I'm gonna zoom out. And you'll see the navigation bar, which is technically an embedded view because it has one screen, which is the navigation screen, if I double click on that, embedded into screen one. So if you find that functionality useful, you can actually do that and replicate that in another way using embedded view. Uh, moving down, I already touched on edit box, which, is, which allows users to input values into the actual HMI screen while it's running to change a variable, for instance. And a lot of these other higher tech objects we will cover in later videos like alarming, logging, um, even the IP camera viewer where you can view an IP camera right on the screen. So a lot of high tech objects under the objects portion of the toolbox. Uh, but for now, 
those are the main things I wanted to cover with the toolbox. And now we'll move on to button properties. As far as button properties, these are the properties associated with these objects and how they will function in your screen. So for instance, if I want to edit the properties of this button here, I can go to the properties window over here and you'll notice there's a ton of different properties that pop up. I'm not going to touch on all of these right now, but I did want to go over command type, uh, which is how this button is going to interact. So it is set to on off right now. And if you hit the drop down, there are three different types that you can change as far as the command of this button. On off means the command or state variable will go on and off with every press. So that variable associated with that uh, button will go on and off with every press. Impulsive means the command or state variable associated with this button will be on only when the button is held. And lastly, execute commands means launching a command either on the release or pressing of this button. So for instance, when I press this button, you might set a variable to a value. You might open up another screen. You might change the whole language of this entire screen if you're sending this HMI to another country, for instance. So this is a very powerful um, aspect of button properties that I wanted to touch on quickly. Now we're gonna move on to how to use toolbars up here on the top of my environment, which are crucial to developing your screens, aligning your objects and editing those objects. So. The first toolbar I want to go over is the alignment toolbar up here on the left top hand side of my screen. Now if you start selecting objects like this rectangle here and then I can hold control on my keyboard and then select another object which is my push button here. You'll notice that this is a darker outline to this object now which makes it the primary object that you're aligning this object with reference to. So for instance, if I click on align left, it will align that push button left with the first primary object. I can align right. I can also align top or bottom, which is nice with that primary object. So very useful tool there in your alignment toolbar. You can center vertically as well, horizontally on the screen as a whole. And then moving across this toolbar, you can make these two objects the same size, which is nice. Again, it will reference the primary object that you selected first. You can make them the same height. As far as the background of the screen itself, you can turn the grids off if you don't want to work with those grids. Uh, I prefer it, so I'm gonna keep those on. Uh, you can snap to grid or turn that off. So right now with snap to grid on, when I move these objects, it'll move it with the background grid. If you turn that off, you can actually place your objects wherever you'd like them on the screen and not in accordance with that grid. And then the last thing is you do have rollers on the top and side of the screen. So you can turn those rollers on or off, but I like to keep the rollers on. Also like to keep the snap to grid on and the grid. So that is the alignment tool as an overview very useful when you're designing your objects and moving them around the screens. For now, I'm going to undo everything I just did to make my screen cleaner again. And that's how I had it before. So now we're going to move into the formatting toolbar. The formatting toolbar is especially useful when you're trying to add text into objects and edit text on multiple objects at one time. So I'm going to click on my rectangle here then click into the middle of it and start adding some text. Uh, my name, for instance, I'm gonna do the same thing with my text box here, which is just a rectangle without borders. So I'm gonna put my name in there, for instance. And then if I do click on both of these objects, I can start editing the text inside of it. So just like you're in Microsoft Word, you can see I can change the font style. I'll change it to Times New Roman. The size of the font I can make a little bit bigger and it's actually editing both of these objects at the same time. I can bold, italicize, underline, and a lot of the basic features you'll also find in Microsoft Word. Uh, same thing with alignment, depending on where you want that inside of your object. But this is a very powerful toolbar that you're gonna wanna use while you're designing your objects. Um, technically, you can do it via the properties window over here, but I find it a lot easier to use the formatting toolbar. So that's a quick overview of the formatting toolbar. Uh, moving left to right, we now have the layers toolbar. So 
When people are designing their screen, sometimes they want multiple layers to that screen. So you can start designing maybe a pop-up that will pop, over, pop up over the entire screen, for instance. So I'm gonna go to my toolbox and add another uh, basic shape, a rectangle, which is technically gonna cover all of my objects there. Now I want to assign a layer to this object so I can go to my properties window and we'll say this is warning pop-up and I can go to my properties window and then under visibility, I can assign this uh, object a layer. So let's make that layer one and now there's multiple layers in my screen. So if I am done editing this warning object, I can actually, using the layers toolbar up here, remove layer one. And now you can see I can edit all of my other objects. And then when I'm finished, I can add that object back in. So that that's the layering toolbar. Pretty basic, but a very powerful tool when you're designing. The next toolbar I wanna to talk about is the symbols toolbar. In this toolbar, there's two things that you'll probably use a lot as you design your screens that I wanted to point out. The first is moving objects from the front to the back. So I do have my warning pop up here as a layer, but if I wanted to move that object behind all of my other objects that are hidden right now, I can do that. So I can actually move that, bring it to the back. So I'll move that behind these objects. And likewise, you can actually bring it to the front if you wanted to bring it over top of another object. So you might find that useful in the symbols toolbar up here. And then the second thing is grouping of objects. So let me move, I'm actually just gonna turn off my layer one. And if I wanted to group this rectangle with this text shape, I can actually use the grouping button here, which will group those together. So if I start moving those around now, they are together as a group, which you might find useful as you design. For now, I'm gonna uh, turn that group off because I wanted to keep everything separate, but that is the symbols toolbar up here. The final thing I wanted to mention, which has no correlation to the toolbars, is locking and unlocking of objects. So as you design your screens, there might be certain objects that you don't want to move around as you're developing. So for instance, if I don't want this rectangle to move, it's already created and it's perfect just how I want it, I can actually right click on that and then lock that object, which then does not allow me to move this object at all or even edit it. So you're gonna probably use that uh, several times while you're designing your screens, but I did wanna point out that feature. That's a general overview of the toolbars and editing of objects. Now we'll move into adding images to your screens.